In this video, I'm going to give you a brief overview of some options if you want to do some searching on the internet. There are multiple search engines that you can choose from, and there are some that are starting to crop up and evolve and change over time here. The first search engine I'm going to start out with here is Google.com. Now, a couple of things about Google. Google actually offers several different options as far as types of search engines that you can work with. It also allows you to search specifically for certain items, videos, images, etc. Now, a couple of things to point out here. Number one, you do have what is called the I'm feeling lucky button. The I'm feeling lucky button is a Google search that'll just randomize your search for you. So if I'm feeling playful, notice it brings up tic-tac-toe for me whenever I do a search. Now, a couple of things whenever you're searching using a search engine here. Number one, most search engines across the top here, you're going to have additional search elements that you can work with as far as what you're looking for. But also, all the search engines, you're probably going to have some form of a tools button. This is a nice option here as far as giving you a additional uh, choices or customization to your search. So to give you a for instance here, like let's change my search over to puppy. Notice here, I can look at images of puppies, but let's go ahead under the tools for instance here. For each of these main areas of a search engine, when you click on the Tools button, you're going to get an additional set of items here. So for instance here, I can choose maybe large pictures of puppies. One that I often do, especially whenever I'm teaching graphic design or whenever we're working with video games as far as graphics, is some things you might want to consider is the usage rights of the image here. Just because an image is popping up in this search here, that doesn't give you the right from a copyright standpoint to just go and use that graphic, especially if you're using it in something like a brochure or a presentation where monetary value can be gained. So you can go under usage rights and you can actually click on the Creative Commons license. So here are some examples of some licensable graphics or open license that may come from places such as, you know, Pixabay and things like that. Like here's a Wikimedia image that you could use and so on and so forth. So you do have a lot of power in the Google search engine. This is one of my personal favorites. Another search engine under Google that in case as far as moving on with your academic career is Google Scholar. Google Scholar is an area whereby that if you need to find reference materials, you can use our CCAC library site, but also too, if you use Google Scholar, so for example, if I use one of my research areas is video game addiction. Here you can see it pops up as far as you can look at time, date, citations, so let's say since 2017. If you see on the right hand side here, you'll see some additional little links here. What that means is you can actually click on the link and it will open the article for you to help with your research. This is a nice option as far as being able to go through and navigate and find additional resources outside of the CCAC library. Moving on, Microsoft has introduced Bing as kind of a competitor to Google. Bing is laid out a little bit differently. You have a main menu at the top here as far as your search options, search history. So now, for instance, if I do puppy again, very similar as far as the layout here. I can go under images. Here you can see all of the puppy graphics. Instead of a tools, they have a filter button that will actually change as far as, you know, what your options are here. So again, very, very similar as far as layout goes. Um, again, it's 
up to you which one you use. However, with both of them, a big concern to the general population was as far as tracking what you search. Google and Microsoft do collect this data. Um, I don't know if you've ever noticed as far as advertisements when you're on the internet. Uh, I always use the example when I was looking for winter tires and then all of a sudden I get winter tire advertisements all over the net. That's from my searching for winter tires. So a third uh, search engine that has now been uh, introduced is what is called DuckDuckGo. Uh, this is starting to kind of gain momentum as far as it's a private search, um, it encrypts, and you're not tracked in your data isn't collected. Works just like the other two. So if I search for puppy, I go to images, same exact deal again. You have different settings you can set, but notice here, DuckDuckGo, they like to bring up all of the different licenses available for you to use right out of the gate. So you have multiple options as far as search engines that you would like to use. I often get the question, is it worth using multiple search engines simultaneously? If you're looking at things like graphics or videos, possibly, as far as web links go, or if you have a web link in mind that you want to go to, such as, you know, for instance, Google Scholar, at that point, it's kind of defeating the purpose there. Um, you know, again, as you're going to see later on in this uh, week's module, having to then go through and evaluate the content that you're Googling or binging or duck ducking can change. So just keep that in mind. But that is to introduce students to different types of search engines that are available to you out there.